Fourth Sunday of Easter A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshippers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this, and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshippers, and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they stand before God's throne and worship Him day and night in His temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst any more, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. 
the fourth Sunday of Easter. The first reading comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 14, and verses 43 to 52. In this passage, we hear about how Paul and Barnabas go to Antioch and Pisidia. And typical of their ministry, they go first of all to preach in the synagogue. But when they're rejected from the synagogue, they go and preach to the Gentiles. But because they are having success among the Gentiles, the Jewish leaders become angry and jealous, and therefore they incite a persecution against Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas leave their territory, but they're filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. First of all, the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit is guiding their ministry and is guiding the growth of the church. And because they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they're filled with joy. Normally, when one is persecuted, one should feel depression or anger or frustration, but because they've been given the privilege of suffering for the gospel, they feel a sense of joy because they realize that when they suffer for the gospel, they are making up what's lacking in the suffering of Christ, a saying that we find in Colossians. And what is lacking but to make it present again in their own flesh, to become sacraments of the passion of Christ, visible signs of invisible grace. The second reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9, and verses 14b to 17. We heard about a great multitude of people. Now previously in that chapter, we had heard that they were the 144,000. 144,000 is 12 times 12 times 1,000. 12, the first 12 represents the patriarchs of the Old Testament. The second 12 represents the apostles of the New Testament and the thousand many times over. So they are the old and the new Israel multiplied a thousand times over. The 144,000 is not the number going to heaven, it's their spiritual identity. They're the old and the new Israel. How many are going to heaven? A great multitude that no one could count from every nation. And they have suffered for the gospel. We hear that their blood was shed. Now it's not exactly clear whether this means a time of great persecution, or whether it simply means the persecution of everyday life. As St. Therese of Lisieux says, a martyrdom of pinpricks, the call to give witness in a world which does not accept our witness easily. The Gospel is from John 10, 27 to 30. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. This is fulfilled in the garden when Mary Magdalene hears the voice of Jesus call her by name, Mary, and she recognizes him. Jesus is our good shepherd, and he will guide us because he and the Father are one, and we are called into that union. That is the purpose of Jesus coming to earth. He came so that we might know how much God loves us and have us enter into that love and may God bless us.